Some of these are very popular, but some of them are not so much. So I think you'll be surprised by a few of these on the list. It really just helps me see until it becomes a habit, a goal is just a dream. So this one is one that is great if you are a very self-motivated person, or it honestly tells you like when you should nap, when you should drink coffee, when you should, you should see a therapist. Okay, don't let me lose you on this one because this is controversial. So don't, don't, don't click away. channel. I am so excited today to talk about some books again. It's been a little while since I've talked about book reviews, favorite books, book lists, but I am an avid reader and I love reading across genres and across platforms. So I will read from fiction to self-help, nonfiction, fantasy. And so today's video is about self-help, specifically the 10 self-help books I think everyone should read. And I'm going to have a little bonus 11th that is very niche. So everyone who this qualifies for should read the bonus 11th book, but it only qualifies for a very small portion of the population. So I will share that at the very end, but I wanted to share these 10 books because reading in the self-help improvement genre, I feel like sometimes can be very overwhelming. It's hard to kind of trim down all of the noise. And some of these are very popular, but some of them are not so much. So I think you'll be surprised by a few of these on the list, but others you'll be like, okay, again, but truly it's because I think that it is a must read. So let's get into the 10 books I think everyone absolutely must read if you're reading within the self-help genre. Book number one is Essentialism by Greg McGowan. And this book I actually read in college. I believe I was a sophomore. I know that it was required reading for a communication studies course that I was a part of. I was a communication studies major. And this was my first kind of little crack open into the self-help space. Really, it's a kind of life improvement and philosophy and I loved it. It's along the same lines as minimalism, just bringing things down, distilling them to their smallest part, not having a range of priorities because priority in the actual meaning of the word means one thing, not multiple priorities, that multiple priorities is actually a misuse of the word priority. It had a huge impact on me. It's still one of my favorites. It's actually one that I want to reread because it's been a few years since I have read this, but it still has an impact on me as one of my favorites. Number two is very similar to it, and it is in the very same vein of distilling things down to their smallest part, and it is called The One Thing. And this one is by Gary Keller with Jay Papazan, and I reference this book all the time. I love this book. This this is very much so more kind of in the habits territory on how you can boil things down to just a single goal for yourself and how you can have a single priority for the day, how you can, it's, there's a lot of how to's within this book. And so very similar vein as essentialism, the one thing, one of my favorites, I think that it is so important. Okay, so number three is the one that you're gonna roll your eyes on, but it is Atomic Habits by James Clear. Now this book really took the world by storm and for good reason. It is so effective just in terms of how habits building, how your daily habits actually contribute to your bigger goals and how if you set a goal without a daily habit to support it, then the goal is actually just a dream. The goal is not actually an action plan. There is no action step behind it. So now whenever I set a goal for myself, I look at my daily habits, my daily schedule, and I think, what am I doing today to actually accomplish those things? Am I making room for it in my everyday life? Do I have room for it in my everyday life? Because as a multi-passionate person, I like to create goals in many different categories. And so this does kind of help me realize, okay, I don't actually have time in my day-to-day -day life to infiltrate that as a habit. It really just helps me see until it becomes a habit, a goal is just a dream. Book number three is one that I read this year, and it is The Gap in the Gain by Dan Sullivan. And it says with Dr. Benjamin Hardy, I think he actually wrote the majority of this based off of the principle that Dan Sullivan kind of used in his coaching. 
And so the gap in the gain is really helpful for high achievers. So this one is one that is great if you are a very self-motivated person and you don't know how to get where you want to go and you are just not sure how to get from your current state to your ideal future state. And this talks about kind of the space in between. It's essentially the habit of looking back in order to look forward. And for people who are too heavily forward thinkers, they can actually get stuck in the present. And so in order to look forward, you have to look back. And so I love this book, very inspirational, very easy to read, super, super fast. And so this was a really good one that I would highly recommend. Number five is You're Not Listening by Kate Murphy. This book is one of my all time favorites. I think it's my favorite on this list. I actually read it last year and I'm already ready to reread it again. And I don't usually reread books, but this book is one of those that I want to reread again because I recommended it to a coworker and he gained so much from it. And so he was really seeing the praises of this book. And I was thinking, I really need to listen to this again. It just talks about the difference between hearing and listening and how in our culture, in our society, we've turned off the ability to listen and we kind of talk at each other instead of to each other. Every single chapter is just a yes, 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 yes. The whole time it's happening. 10 out of 10. The next book is Stolen Focus by Joanne Hari. I love this book. It is so good. It does kind of begin in one vein and I feel like part two kind of splinters off in multiple different ways that feels a little bit confusing and disorienting given where it started because I feel like the first half or chunk of the book is so tangible, helpful, one of those yes, yes, yes things. And then kind of the solution on how do we solve this problem of having stolen focus is where it gets a little bit, you know, kind of spider webbed. It really just addresses the focus of our generation, how technology is stealing our focus, how different big tech companies are designing it to be that way, and how we're essentially at the mercy of our devices and how that's really, really affecting our relationships, our productivity in society. The author has a very kind of overarching view of society as a whole, looking at how the solutions can be solved, not necessarily on an individual level, but on a societal level. So I think that's where maybe it's splintered because I'm always looking at how can I solve this individually? And he goes into, well, this actually isn't an individual problem that could be, that needs to be solved, it needs to be solved on a like very large level in order for real change to happen. And so this is a super good book. I found it super valuable. Number seven is a little bit more niche. It is called The Power of When, and it is by Michael Brewis. This book talks about the different chronotypes of people, how we're all on different clocks and how we can leverage our specific clock in order to be productive or to set boundaries for ourselves. It outlines that there are four different types of people. So it's almost like a personality type book, but there is science behind there actually being biologically four different chronotypes of humans, bears, dolphins, lions, and wolves. And this is based off of their energy and sleeping habits. And so this gives you actually advice based off of your chronotype for when you can do different kinds of work, like focus work or distracted work, or it honestly tells you like when you should nap, when you should drink coffee, when sh you should see a therapist, when you should strength train. So it's super interesting. I would definitely recommend this book. Okay, don't let me lose you on this one because this is controversial. So don't, don't, don't click away. There might be some good ones after this, but this is another recommendation. Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. Now this is a very well-known financial principle of having zero debt. And so that is what kind of drew me to this book to see, okay, what can we do? Step one, two, three to do this. We ended up doing the debt snowball and we got completely debt free within a year and a half of reading this, I want to say. I was 26 when we were fully debt-free and we are still debt-free to this day. And so I will say that this transformed our relationship with money, our relationship just with ourselves too. The amount of stress that we have over finances now is so minimal compared to 
what it used to be. So this has really, really transformed my life and my lifestyle. So 10 out of 10 recommend, but I know that it's not for everyone. Okay, I think that this is the most talked book about on my channel. I think I mentioned it in like every other vlog, but it is The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer. I think this is probably like the fifth video I've mentioned this book in, but I can't create a 10 must read list without including this for the self help genre. Now this book is really about quieting down your life and it is definitely written for a Christian audience. So just keep that in mind. And it breaks down specifically a lot of really good practices like the Sabbath and how valuable a Sabbath practice can be. So I think that this is really valuable for anyone. Absolutely. Just keep in mind that it's written by a Christian kind of for a Christian audience, but it has really helpful nuggets truly for anyone. So I think that you can read this no matter where you're coming from and gain something really valuable from it. Number 10 is actually more so along the practical help lines and that is your best year ever by michael hyatt now i read this at the very start of the year last year before setting my goals and it is such a good and motivating book for goal setting i think if you're kind of within the whole habit genre like you just came off of reading atomic habits i think that this would be a really good helpful second read for you so he kind of breaks it down into habit goals like you could have habit goals for the year whereas i believe that atomic habits would count every goal as a habit goal like your goals have to start at the habit level in order to grow and in order to reach that goal and so they are slightly different in terms of their philosophy for goal setting but i found this very highly motivating it helps me honestly look at and take a look at the different areas of my life because there's a test in this book it helps you score different aspects of your life for kind of quality and improvement and find out which areas you could use the most improvement in. I just found that that was super, super helpful to kind of break it down in that way. So really helpful nuggets in this book. Definitely would recommend it. All right. So our final book here is our super, super niche one. And that is specifically for those who follow the Myers-Briggs personality system and who are an ENFP. <laughs> so this is so, so niche. But this is one of the best books I've read as an ENFP on ENFPs. Actually, I should kind of amend that because it is the only book that I've read as an ENFP on ENFPs. But you always hope for very specific personality advice after getting obsessed and down the MBTI rabbit hole. And I will say that this scratches that itch so well. This is by Heidi Pribe or Pribe. I'm not sure. I've heard Heidi Pribe multiple times but i don't think that that's right it doesn't sound right and she is actually a blogger who was kind of made famous on twitter mostly for her knowledge of mbti systems and she is an enfp and she wrote a survival guide for other enfps and this just rang true so 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 deeply and there's also one for infps i will say that so i had an infp friend who I recommended and I bought the INFP survival guide for. And he said that it was the best book he that he's read on the subject and that it just felt like it was so on the nose for who he was. So I'm so glad for him that he was able to read that. And so the NFP one and the INFP one, she has wrote, written both versions. Unfortunately, there's only those two available. So if this applies to you, definitely buy this book. So that is the list of all 10 books that I think that absolutely everyone could benefit from reading, plus a little sub point for our book 11 there. But thank you so, so much for watching this video. It means so much to me that you did. If you liked it, please remember to give it a little thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel for content that might be similar to this in the future. I cannot wait to catch you on the next video. Bye friends. Happy reading.